Jack Curtis, 1584 Onondaga Avenue, Ward 2, Precinct G, where I have lived uh, with my wife for the past 26 years. I myself have lived in Lakewood <clears throat> for 30 years, which is most of my adult life. From 1946 to 1983, just shy of 38 years, my father worked in the, on the factory floor in Avon Lake at what used to be called the Cleveland Electric Illuminating Company, CEI, doing a dangerous job, working on heavy and dangerous machinery, all in the midst of a toxic stew of chemicals like asbestos and coal dust. When I was a teenager back in the 1970s, I remember that the company magazine, what used to be known in corporate speak as the corporate organ, used to arrive at our house in regular intervals. I remember thumbing through that magazine out of curiosity when it would arrive at our house. And I remember while reading that magazine, I regularly encountered articles about what bad shape CEI's competitor, Cleveland Muni Light, was supposedly in. The gist of those articles always seemed to be that Muni Light was providing poor service while losing to Cleveland taxpayers millions of dollars and unless the city of Cleveland sold the Muni Light plant to CEI, terrible things would happen. This kind of disinformation must also have been circulating on the factory floor, because even my father used to talk periodically about how it looked like Muni Light would have to be taken over by CEI. Big corporate PR campaigns have a way of doing that. In essence, just like in our situation with the hospital, the messaging was that it was a foregone conclusion that we have to do what the corporate community wants or else. As we know, CEI didn't get its way. In 1978, the mayor of Cleveland stood alone and blocked that takeover and paid a terrible price for it, as did the city of Cleveland at that time. Recently, I was doing some reading online. I came across an article from Cleveland Magazine dating back to 1996 that included the CEI Muni Light incident. In that article, the sordid history of the entire affair was rehashed. The most poignant point that was made, though, was that there was now little debate that Muni Light, now Cleveland Public Power, was a proven asset to the city. It was interesting that in the article, several prominent members of the business community, a community that had been viscerally critical of that mayor's actions, had to admit that, he, that what he did helped begin Cleveland's renaissance. More important, the article pointed out, that in the decade between 1985 and 1995, the year before the article was published, that plant saved its customers, the citizens of Cleveland, over $195 million when compared with what they would have paid CEI had the mayor listened to the line put out by CEI and the business community. That article was written 20 years ago and was written 18 years after Cleveland's default. And Cleveland Public Power remains in operation today and has been in continuous operation since 1914. Meantime, that old CEI Avon Lake plant where my father used to work has a parking lot with very few cars in it when I drive by it today. Political courage in the face of a relentless corporate campaign is an admittedly difficult thing to do. In many respects, I do not envy you in the decisions you must make. It is truly a difficult job. In 1978, there was only one person who stood up for his constituents and by doing so stood up to corporate power, thereby saving his constituents hundreds of millions of dollars. It is my hope that perhaps on this body, there are a few of you who are willing to do the same.